Over the past decade, the Navy has increased the amount of time its ships are deployed and has deferred ship maintenance to meet heavy operational demands. This has resulted in deteriorating conditions across the fleet, requiring longer maintenance periods at naval shipyards. The efficiency and effectiveness of the naval shipyards is critical to maintaining Navy readiness, and the shipyard's performance depends, in part, on the condition of their facilities and equipment. Over its history, the Navy has operated 13 naval shipyards. Most of them have been converted to other uses or closed, and now only four remain. Norfolk Naval Shipyard, Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, and Pearl Harbor Naval Shipyard. The four remaining shipyards were originally established to build the sail and steam-powered ships of the 18th, 19th, and 20th centuries. They were not designed to support the types of ships they maintain today, such as nuclear-powered aircraft carriers and submarines. The Navy relies on the efficient operation of these shipyards to support its aircraft carrier and submarine presence around the world. However, facilities at the shipyards are in poor condition. For example, about 50 buildings at the naval shipyards have been condemned or are unusable for ship repair activities, including some in prime locations that the Navy says could efficiently support ship repair. As a workaround, the Navy has purchased or rented temporary facilities at every shipyard, some of which have been in place for decades. The Navy says that due to a lack of space, it has even been necessary to stack temporary facilities on top of each other. Sometimes, temporary facilities are fabricated using plastic sheeting and duct tape. The backlog of restoration and modernization projects for these shipyards has continued to grow, and their aging equipment is likely to need frequent repairs. For example, Norfolk Naval Shipyard used a furnace from 1931 to heat-treat submarine parts to withstand deep-sea pressure until two years ago, when workers discovered that this furnace did not heat parts evenly or to the correct temperatures. The Navy removed the furnace from use, but had to re-inspect 10 years' worth of submarine repairs. The naval shipyards also rely on old, poorly configured dry docks, which are on average about 89 years old. Dry docks are critical to maintaining required safety conditions, and many cannot support the newest aircraft carriers and submarines. For example, the Navy's dry docks cannot currently support all Ford-class aircraft carrier requirements. Due to the current lack of dry dock capacity, the Navy predicts that it will be unable to perform a third of its scheduled aircraft carrier and submarine maintenance projects over the next two decades. Navy planners say they will need an average of $750 million a year to address dry dock, facilities, and equipment needs. But the Navy has only allotted an average of $384 million a year over the last 11 years and repairing and modernizing the facilities at these shipyards can be difficult and costly. Shipyards have to satisfy anti-terrorism requirements, building codes, and environmental issues that can lead to project cost growth. The shipyard's waterfront locations force them to address rising sea levels and flooding. Earthquakes can also cause accidental flooding of dry docks and damage to shipyards and populated areas. The age of the shipyards and their histories also make them subject to historic preservation requirements. In 2013, the Navy estimated that it would take over 17 years to address some of its pressing shipyard issues. But our assessment indicates it will take longer than the Navy predicts, beyond 2035. Even with recent investments, the Navy is struggling to complete scheduled maintenance on time. And as its fleet grows, the Navy will face greater challenges. To find out more about actions that can be taken to address these challenges, look for our report GAO-17-548, which you can find on our website at gao.gov.